Good morning, guys. Thank you, Pastor Drevlo, for serving us today. Happy birthday to the following classmates. Ethan Olander in fourth grade and Jackson Rhodes in second grade. Today, March 2nd. If you want to clap that badly, you can clap, Titus. <laughs> Eli Olander in kindergarten on March 5th and Charlie Ploim in second grade on March 8th. All right, God bless your day. That's all I got. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's not, nothing better than hearing kids say good morning back to you. Uh, my name is Pastor Drevlo. Uh, you might know Moses or Joy. Uh, they're my children. I'm from Our Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm thankful to be with you. It's a special day. How many of you know what day? Who knows what day it is today? What, what day is it today? That is correct. You are great. Fantastic. It's Ash Wednesday today. Does anybody know what Ash Wednesday does? What, what, what do we do on Ash Wednesday? You, you look like you're going to come out of your seat here. Yes. That's okay. Uh-huh. That's right, we do imposition of ashes. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Ash Wednesday is the beginning of what? What's Ash Wednesday? Go ahead. Lent. Lent. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. And Lent is a season. It's 40 days minus the Sundays that we meditate on Christ, his journey to the cross, his death, and his resurrection. Yeah? Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And it's also, we call it, it's a big fancy word, we call it a penitential system, or season, excuse me, penitential season. And that means <coughs> that we consider our sin. We consider the reasons why Jesus needed to go to the cross, right? So some of you very rightly pointed out, uh, we do ashes, and someone over here asked me, why do I have a cross on my forehead? Well, a common thing to do when people felt sorrowful, when they felt bad, when they felt uh, you know, guilty of their sins and they wanted to show the Lord that they were trying to repent, they were trying to say sorry, yeah, is they would put on sackcloth, which if you've ever seen like a gunny bag or one of those brown uh, 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 kind of really coarse flannel things, yeah, uh, sackcloth, and they put on ashes, they put ashes on their forehead. But now we put ashes in the sign of the cross on our foreheads. We call it imposition of ashes. We're going to do that today. Okay? Now the big kids are going to help show us how to do it. We're going to come up in a line, come all the way around and come back down and sit down in our seats. Now, teachers, if you could help a little bit to shepherd the children up and back around, I'd very much appreciate it. Hopefully they should be able to get up and come right back to their seats. We, it was pretty smooth in the early chapel. You know, but uh, if it takes a little longer, it'll be okay, because we actually were early in the early chapel, so if it takes a little longer, it should be fine. Um, so we're going to do imposition of ashes. Uh, first, let's sing together, okay? We're going to sing. I, I think you guys should know this one, God Loves Me Dearly. You guys know this one? Yeah? Oh, I, you know what? Thank you for reminding me. I appreciate that. That's great. No, you don't have to do it. If you, if you would like to stay seated and not come up and, do, and receive ashes, you do not have to. We don't want to make you think like you have to do this. It's just a sign of piety. It's something that you'd want to do. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to not do it, just stay in your seats and let people go right past you. Okay? okay. All right. Let's sing... Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. God loves me dearly. God loves me dearly, grants me salvation. God loves me dearly, loves even me. Therefore I'll say again, God loves me dearly, God loves me dearly, loves even me. 
I was in slavery, sin, death, and darkness. God's love was working to make me free. Everybody. Therefore I'll say again, God loves me dearly. God loves me dearly. Loves even me. Okay. O oh God, Father in heaven, have mercy on us. O oh Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. <clears throat> Our reading for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Joel. Okay? I'm going to read. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep, and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. So, in our Joel lesson, we got this word that is ulav. Why don't you say it with me? Ulav. Let's say it again. Ulav. And in Hebrew, ulav means who knows? Who knows? Now, the people of the time of Joel, the, Joel is writing this letter to Israel. Yeah? And the people of Israel have done a lot of bad stuff. Yeah? The people in power have taken advantage of the weak, the young, the orphans, the widows. And these are the exact people that the Lord says you should protect and love. It's bad news. It's real bad. And God is... He's very, very angry with his people. He's going to punish them. And so they, they, uh, they say this, who knows? They repent and they say, who knows? Let's, let's put on sackcloth and ashes. Let's repent. Let's, let's repent of our sins. Let's say we're sorry for the things we've done. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will turn and relent. Maybe he won't do this thing that he's promised to do. And of course we find out that's exactly what happens. The Lord says, I, I will leave a drink offering because you've rendered your hearts, not your garments. The same thing happens. How many of you have heard the story of Jonah? Have you ever heard the story of Jonah? Same thing happens in the story of Jonah. Jonah goes to Nineveh, and the Ninevites are some bad dudes. Not good people. Yeah? And, and Jonah knows that the Lord's going to forgive them. Jonah walks into the city of Nineveh, and he says... Forty days, and the whole city of Nineveh will be overturned. What that really means is God's going to destroy the whole city of Nineveh in 40 days. And you know the crazy thing that happens? These evil people who've done all kinds of terrible things, they repent. They put on sackcloth. They put on ashes. And then they say, guess what they say? What, what did I teach you before? What's the word? No, what's the, what's the Hebrew word? Ulav. They, said, they say the same word. They say, Ulav. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will turn and forgive us. The same word. Yeah? I want to ask you an honest question, okay? I want you to answer honestly by raising your hand. How many of you are perfect? Raise your hand. Really? How many of you are sinners? Raise your hand. You better believe it. In fact, Romans tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Actually, that's a, that's a psalm as well. We've all fallen, we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. How many of you have ever punched your sibling? Raise your hand. Never? How many of you have ever taken something in your house that wasn't yours to take? A cookie, a piece of candy, a toy? Raise your hand. Moses? Yeah, raise your hand. How many of you have ever said a mean word or a hurtful thing to somebody else? Raise your hand. Yeah. I got some people down here that aren't raising their hands. I'm pretty surprised. So here, here's the thing. We might think we're better than the people in the Old Testament, but are we? No. We're just as much of sinners as they are. And so we might say the same thing. What do we say? Ulauv. We put on sackcloth. We put on ashes. And we say, Ulauv, who knows? Maybe the Lord will forgive us. Yeah? Ash Wednesday begins, as I said before, a penitential season. A time where we think about Christ. We think about what he's done for us on the cross. But we also think about our sin. And the things that we've done as well. Yeah? We can't run away from our sin, but rather what we need to do is face it and ask for forgiveness. How many of you have ever got caught doing something bad and then you, uh, your, maybe your mom said, uh, wait till your dad gets home, or maybe your dad said, wait till your mom gets home. I don't know nowadays, but maybe it's something like that, right? And, and then you had to wait, right? You had to wait and wait. And wait. And the waiting's worse than the punishment, isn't it? Yeah? Because of that guilt. You ever had that guilt that just kind of sits right here and it hurts? But what's the best feeling in the world? Yeah? When you go and you say, I'm sorry, and then someone says back what? I forgive you. And that guilt just melts away. We should be a people who look our sin straight in the eye and ask for forgiveness. We shouldn't hide it. We shouldn't run away from it. We should ask for forgiveness from it. Okay, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay? Let's stand up and do this together. Every time we try to deal with our sins by ignoring them or making excuses or running away, we end up worse than before. But when we face our failures honestly and confess them to God, He will forgive. Let's take some time to think about those things that we've done, those sins we've committed, okay? Let's think about them in our heads. We confess together, ready? We confess that we have sinned against God, our Creator, and that we have sinned against the people around us. By unkind words we have spoken, and by unloving actions we have done. As a sign of our confession now, uh, if you wish, we are going to come forward and do imposition of ashes. So why don't the little kids in front for right now just sit, We'll have the older kids start for us, okay? <clears throat> From dust you came, and to dust you shall return.
Thank you, Ms. Prouty. You know, we make the sign of the ashes in, in what shape? A cross. So we might ask ourselves, who knows? You know, those Old Testament people, they only had a hope of forgiveness. Who knows? But we know, don't we? Why do we know we have forgiveness? Because of Jesus and because of what he has done for us. For the Ninevites, when Jonah went there, for the people Joel prophesied to, for many in the Old Testament, they could only ask the question, who knows? Perhaps the Lord will have mercy on us. But we, who know Christ, and who know what he has done for us, we know. We know we are forgiven, and we have eternal life in Jesus. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, it is my joy to forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together and say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the part of our, our catechism we'll study today is from uh, the question, what is confession? Let's say this together. Confession has two parts. First, that we... <coughs> and second, that we receive absolution. That is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Can I just tell you something that you've moved me today? There is no sweeter sound to a pastor than hearing all these beautiful children say the Lord's Prayer together. Uh, it just it overwhelms me. I'm so thankful. Thank you for giving me that today. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Be seated. We're going to sing our, uh, our last two verses of our song.
might share with you just a thought. Um, don't be afraid if at some point you want to wash off the ashes. Think yourself, well, now that they've done this, so they have to stay here all night or all day. When you decide you want to wash them off, which is fine, you can remember your baptism. Yeah? You can wash your face and think in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you can wash those ashes off and remember that Christ has forgiven you your sins. Okay? So if you want to wash them off sometime during the day or tonight when you go home from school or whatever the case may be, that's okay. Okay? And I, I'll tell you something I tell my church every Sunday. I love you all very much. And there's not a thing you can do about it. The Lord's blessings. Have a great day.